Good afternoon, good evening, uh, depending on where you're watching us from. Welcome to uh, this unusual setup of TV Bapoetu. And I'm your host, Linda Banks, with my co host, Patrick Lufia, and our resident pharmacist, Jerome Kanika. Patrick, good evening. Good evening, Mrs. Linda Banks. Uh, Jerome, good evening. Nice to see you. It's been a while. Yeah, good evening, Linda. Yes, it has been a while, but uh, I've been following TV Bakwet on the on the background. Yeah. Thank you very much. Nice to see you. Well, viewers, um, as I mentioned, it's going to be uh, a very interesting conversation. Uh, it's slightly unusual. Um, we're going to be talking about trending stories, current affairs, what is happening in our lovely country. Uh, before we do that, if you could kindly... Uh, share the link, uh, invite as many people as you possibly can, and please don't forget to send those stars. We really appreciate those. And um, before we get started, actually, um, if you could just let me know where you're watching us from, that would be lovely. I can see uh, Hilary Kasuma saying good evening, Vakwe to Sampa Chungu, who is a regular viewer, watching from Forest 27, which is lovely. Uh, Benson C. Saili, Patrick, uh, my favorite on Wakwetu, you and Wakason, so fantastic. So it's quite fascinating. Each viewer has got their own favorite personality, which is really lovely. Um, 
So just tell us where you're watching us from as we get ready to start. We have just been joined by another of our regulars, uh, Mr. Oscar Pombo. Well, now just to take you through today's uh, topics, we're going to be having a look at um, the uh, theft that is taking place at pharmacists, uh, at pharmacies uh, um, uh, and in pharmacies at particular hospitals because the Minister of Health has been going around to uh, have a check on what is happening uh, around different hospitals and different pharmacies and the revelation has been just damn founding, honestly. So uh, we're going to be discussing that and we're also going to be touching slightly on uh, the trending topic actually, the fuel, fuel subsidies or lack of it. And um, if the IMF actually did coerce the New Dawn government to drop the subsidies, do we need them? And uh, all that sort of stuff. So we're going to be exploring that. Another topic we're going to be looking at is um, the alleged fallout be uh, between Honorable uh, Kambwili, Shimba Kambwili, and the former Americans. Uh, so there ha that has been a trending story, so we have to talk about that. And last but not the least, the Zambia Revenue Authority meeting this month, uh, we're going to be talking about whether they're meeting their targets or not. Um, but before we get into all the topics, I just want to say um, our deepest condolences from all the uh, TV Bakweto family to uh, Dr. Kabungo's uh, family. And Dr. Kabungo comes from uh, our hometown of Fulira, and his body is going to be arriving uh, tomorrow. Um, and the funeral will be taking place in Muflira, I understand. And I've heard that it might be taking place uh, at a stadium because a lot of people would like to um, uh, would like to go and attend that funeral. And I would like to say a very big thank you to all the uh, Muflira, my hometown group. We have raised an incredible amount of money towards the funeral. And that is the proper spirit of Ubuntu. So thank you very much, guys. Uh, now, without further ado, I'm going to, uh, I think we'll start with the hottest topic at the moment. Uh, the Ministry of Health at it again. I mean, Jerome, we are constantly talking about the Ministry of Health. Could you just enlighten us? What is going on? What happened? Yeah, <laughs> guys, it's very interesting. My ministry has a lot of uh, issues. Uh, these issues are happening because of the damage which, uh, which was left by the previous administration, but there is more to come. Uh, what, what people are hearing are just... Uh, a, a, a small or a tiny uh, uh, amount of the thing, maybe 5%, there's a 95% that people are yet to know concerning the issues that have been happening in the Ministry of, of Health, and it's very, very sad. Hopefully, hopefully we are going to, uh, it is going to, to be a better ministry. Uh, uh, at least in, I've liked the, the energy of the current minister for, for health and the, for our open door policy where she's not discriminating any profession, but she's working with almost everyone. For me, that itself, it shows that we are going to at least have a proper ministry of health very soon. Thank you very much, Jerome. Uh, Mr. Chilufia, what's your view on the Ministry of Health and what has been happening in the week? Yeah, <clears throat> but, but Linda, as you know, Ministry of Health makes me, makes me cry whenever I hear about it all the time. Because mm -hmm. as you know, Ministry of Health like Zesco, they've been cash cows for so many years. And um, the cartels in those uh, Minister of Health, they will never go. Because those cartels involve so many people. It involve, involves outside people, involves inside people. But there is a story which um, came out this in the diggers today, this morning. And um, to, my surpri to my surprise, I noticed that the minister also is going out into the hospitals. And I think it's a good thing because she needs to go into the hospital and talk to the people, especially the patients. 
because I've been talking to people who have been admitted in the hospitals in the last um, few weeks, months. It's not a good thing. There's literally nothing in hospitals. And, um, and sometimes they would give them food, sometimes they don't give them. So it's a good thing, but that's not only uh, the, the thing she needs to do. And Jerome also mentioned she's got the energy. Yes, we need the energy, but that ministry requires a lot of action. It requires a lot of work to do because that the stealing there, we cannot blame Balamasevo. We cannot blame the, this government. We can partially blame the last government because they allowed corruption to go on. But again, this government um, is serious about corruption, but that seriousness is not enough. That okay. Ministry of Health needs proper computerized systems. We've mm -hmm. been talking about this. And uh, on Kason, one on one on Kasonso on Monday, we'll be talking in detail about, we'll bring an expert in medical uh, profession and, and also who knows the, how IT system, electronic system helps to stop some of that stealing. Because mm -hmm. they are saying pharmacists, this has been going on for a long time until the diggers went and dig it. Pharmacists are actually stealing medication and sell it to the pharmacist. It's not us who is selling it. The diggers are saying that. So, yeah, yeah which is which is true because this has mm -hmm. been going on for a, a long time. Why has it not been stopped? Because okay. we cannot stop it because it's a manual. There is a manual system there. We need to put an electronic system. Balinda, Banana Banks. If we put an electronic system there, it will be able to track where drugs are coming from, where drugs... Say, if I'm, if I'm sick, I go to the hospital. That's how, that's how the system works here. The doctor does not give me a prescription. The doctor emails the prescription to the pharmacist. So you know what happens? The doctor has already checked there's a drug in the system. Emails it to the, to the pharmacist. The moment the doctor uh, emails that, that uh, uh, prescription, it has already deducted from the medication that is in the pharmacy. Mm. Okay. So, and then if medication is given to the to to to, to the patient, so there is no, because even if even if there is audit by the banks, how do you audit a paper trail? It's difficult. And and, and not only that, there should be other other controls on top of that. There should be cameras. There should be tight security. And not only that, there should be uh, a financial control system within the hospitals. There should be a, 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 a controller there. They can call him uh, a stock controller, mm -hmm. also answerable to, to the medication coming in and out. And they should have a system whereby if there's no medication in the pharmacy, they should be able to check which store has got medication. Is it a SAMSA? Which, which SAMSA? And then if that make medication is required, they can even get it from another hospital in another town. Mm -hmm. Then Thank they'll be you able to, you know, you know, things like that. So systems need to be in place. Otherwise, this theft, it, it, might, it might be costly, but it's worth it because Zambians and Zambia is losing a lot every day. Thank, Thank you, you. Banana, Mrs. Banks. Thank you very much. Uh, Mr. Mpombo. Good evening. Welcome to the program. Hello. Good evening. Good evening, Linda, and good evening, all the panel. Thank you very much. So we're currently discussing the Ministry of Health um, and what transpired uh, during the week. Uh, the minister uh, dis unearthing some horrific practices yeah. Um, yeah. where pharmacists are um, involved in selling of drugs. Uh, on the black market and uh, yeah. people not doing the jobs that they're being paid to do. Uh, some people were found on mobile phones uh, instead of actually attending to patients. So take your peek. What's your comment yes. on that? Yes, M my comment, my dear sister, is that um, I think uh, this is not a novelty. It's not new because um, that what brought the anxiety from many of the Zambians. The Zambians were so impatient, even with our president, when there were no changes immediately. 
The reason why most of the Zambians became impatient is that uh, they foresee, they foresaw all this disaster. Uh, uh, my dear sister Linda, ba Linda Banks, um, uh, it's not only in the Ministry of Health. There are many ministries where this disaster um, is happening. Um, look, think of uh, the Ministry of Education. Think of the Ministry of Lands. Even now in foreign ministry, uh, Army needs lead, the embassies. The embassies is a disaster. What happens in the embassies here in Italy, it's a total disaster. So uh, it's, not, it's not new what has happened at the Ministry of Health and whatever the minister has discovered, I think to the 2.8 Zambians, it was so confident and it was so evident that it was going on. Now, the question is, what's the way forward? Um, what is the way forward? Yeah, what's the way forward? Um, you know, I appreciate our president's stand not to um, to fire everyone because most of the UPND um, supporters were saying, change, change the people in these in these positions, change them. If you don't do that, nothing is going to change. I think this is also the the position of. Uh, Mr. Jeremy, if you don't change these guys, what do we expect? And so I think there is a need. We all need, we, all, we have seen that there is a need to make some changes. It's a little bit complicated, but there is a need to make some changes. Um, um, I am thankful. I thank what the Minister of, of, of Health is doing, Mrs. Masevo. I, I thank her stance and I thank also the Vice President what she did today. It was so wonderful. But I think the, the disaster, um, Linda Banks, is very profound. The disaster is very profound. How do we change this disaster? I like psychology myself. In psychology, we talk about the contamination. If the contamination is too deep, Ms. Linda Bank, before we can solve the question of contamination, we have to make a process of decontamination, a process mm -hmm. of decontamination. Otherwise, How do we do that? sorry? How do we do that? It, it's a process. And we have, we have to make some stages, my dear sister, some stages. Decontamination is, first of all, we, dis, we, we, um, we have to uh, understand the levels of contamination and the percentage of contamination. And then we start a process of decontamination until later on we will arrive to a, a process of freedom and then, and then co a, a construction and and, and, and other things. If we don't do the process of decontamination, we are going to start building, my dear sister, on the rotten structure. And That's on this position, and this position, has Mr. Pombo just hung? Okay. Muelo, welcome to the program. And what's your view on what has Did been happening? Did they leave these people there? Nothing is going uh, Mr. Pombo, I'll come back it's to terrible. you. It's terrible. That's terrible. Sorry. Yeah. Thank you. Okay. You, you hung yeah. earlier. Sorry. Thank you. Um, Muelo, Thank welcome you. to the program. And what's your view Thank on you. the happenings at the Ministry of Health? Um, I'm good. Hoping everyone else is okay and having a good day or an evening. Um. I'm just thinking these are the repercussions of us as a people tolerating a lot of the rubbish that was happening in these ministries. There were elements that probably we could say, yes, the government was forwarding and we didn't have the power of maybe refusing or standing up. But I think we know that pharmacists, it's common knowledge that pharmacists do meds from the hospitals 
our our doctors equally do the same we go into private hospitals and we actually buy the medication that even has the label you know the packaging you can tell that this packaging is coming from a government institution and we still get the meds so it's us who have fed some of these you know silly corrupt practices it's the same thing even with the zesco um, I don't believe that Desco has had a backlog of 60,000 miraculously because of the forestry reserve or the, you know, Zafiko unable to meet the targets. It's because they're corrupt practices. If I wanted the, the, the Desco pause, I could go to Desco, pay the backdoor route, and tomorrow I'll have a Desco pause. So I think they have 60,000 in demand because they had these corrupt practices that they've been allowing, and we equally have been tolerating it. So when I see the minister going there, it's, I am happy that she's going there and she's saying it out, but it's not a new phenomenon like, wow, you know, let's be really happy. She's found, no, no, no. This has been happening for eons and eons. I walk into little private hospitals sometimes when you don't want to go to an expensive one, and I will get the medication that I know this is government standard, and I don't say anything about it. I don't do anything about it. So it's, it's not anything new. We just really need to see them saying, look, these are the rules we're going to have if the medication will have special maybe logos or labels and if i find this label in the pharmacy then they will cut you then we are seeing results but for now mm -hmm. just saying i found the meds or people don't work this is common knowledge medical people hop from one job to another the whole day i can mm -hmm. go i i'm gonna look for it. maybe i'll give an example of a gynecologist i want to see a gynecologist in a particular hospital he'll tell me meet me at three but at two he'll be at uth at mm. three, he'll be at a different hospital. So this is yeah. nothing new that we find our medical personnel sitting on phones and it's nothing new. Okay. Even when she says I found it, I'm just thinking, well, for you maybe, but for us. Yeah. 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 Thank you very much. And this is where uh, Mr. Chilifia was talking about systems, putting systems um, in place that will actually uh, deter some of these things from happening. Now, I'm going to close on this topic with uh, Mr. Kanyika. Um, who is soon to be Dr. Kanika. Um, what do you think the solutions are? Because you are literally there. You are working in these uh, institutions. What do you think? Could you just give me like five solutions that the, the minister could implement like in the next four weeks? You're muted. Yeah, it's very difficult to say these are the quicker solutions that need to be to be done now. Yeah, because of uh, the, the, the load at which uh, this has been happening. But what we need to do, we need to consider, uh, like the way Mr. Chilufia said, how we need to develop the systems in which all the drugs that come from the hospitals have been uh, 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 accounted for, but without that, then there will be a big, big problem. Uh, it's only in Zambia where you can go and uh, get drugs same day from different uh, uh, clinics or hospitals using the same prescription, which should not be the case at all. So if what can they do to stop with... that? I think, first of all, we need to resuscitate the system of prescriptions because the, under the previous administration, we killed the system of prescriptions where it was a, it was a case, a serious case, even dismissal if you issue a prescription to any patient in the previous administration. So we need to make sure that the first pres prescriptions start uh, flowing and we need to know exactly who are the prescribers because what is really happening is every gym and jack is a prescriber. There are people we call with my friends to say, Dr. Ochman, you got a certain health facility somewhere, I'll find the Ochman night in a prescription for you to, to get the medication and they put a death stamp. So it's something else. We need to stop that those vices. Then not on that, we need also, like everyone has said, we need to blend the medicines for government but I was shocked, uh, actually, at one time when someone, uh, I met someone who said that, no, they sell drugs like uh, in Angola and the people in Angola, they want quite a branded GRZ. So I was telling them to say, how do you have the drug branded GRZ? Those are for government and uh, it's a big criminal offense if you uh, know the people in this place in Angola, that's what they, 
they want to buy this medication branded GRZ. So even if you brand something in GRZ, provided the criminal mind is still there, I think it's, uh, I can assure you, uh, still the drugs will go missing. Uh, I remember very well in the previous administration, uh, um, I reported, I think, one of the theft where in Zambia, most of the, of the drugs that are affected, the antibiotics, antimalarials, and uh, ARVs, these are the drugs that are highly affected with uh, being stolen. I think I reported one of the private pharmaceutical companies to both Zamra, uh, Zambia Police, and the, the Ministry of Health. I think by then there was Dr. Kenneth Maramas, the PS, and you know the shocking party. The police started chasing me as if it's me was stolen. Just imagine. So, <laughs> so the, there are all these kind of things. But I reported, yeah. and to make the matter worse, that was a private pharmaceutical company that was selling a government branded medication at a very cheap price. And okay. this, there is the pharmacy technologist. There is also a pharmacist in that uh, 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 private. Uh, pharmaceutical company, I was very much shocked. Instead of instead of the police following up that person, the police started following me up. Who went to report a wrong act to say, I'm a passionate citizen. I cannot be watching government drugs being taken to private wholesales. And these private wholesales, they start saying to, to the Zambian people, no, let me report this. I ended up being chased by the police all day, calling me, where are you, where, what? It was hell, I'm telling you. I think Mwape Komwenda can be my witness over this and other, other guys. And unfortunately, I discovered that, uh, those, that those were anti-malarials and came through malaria control center. That's an, an, an unfortunate party. And by then, the former minister's wife was a director at malaria control center. So they wanted to make sure that they bury that which is very much unfortunate. Thank you very much for that contribution, Jerome. Um, really unfortunate that that happens. Now, on a somber note, we're going to move to this story. Um, I actually mentioned earlier that uh, Dr. Kawumbuko's body will be arriving tomorrow, but actually, in effect, the body arrived today. So um, it arrived today from Nigeria. Some of you who may not know, he's the doctor who, who sadly lost his life in very unfortunate circumstances. So his body... Um, has uh, arrived today in the country uh, through Ethiopian Airlines and um, the FAS uh, General Secretary Adrian Kashala and four medical doctors who had traveled to Nigeria to bring the body back, uh, reported back that everything is in place. And um, now um, I know Muelo, you are uh, a Mafgan uh, dweller. Well, you come from Mufalera. So um, do you have any sentiments to share? about this incident? Um, it's a sad one. I think I was I was a bit young. I remember him, um, I think, quite close with my parents, my dad in particular. Um, yeah. And it's unfortunate because somebody that you know and it's somebody that you can you think about. Yeah. It's just unfortunate that he died in such circumstances. Yeah. Um, obviously, everyone wants answers. And I think the first couple of days, there were so many dodgy stories that were stating that maybe he had been actually physically harmed and then he'd um he'd had it collapsed and then later on it was um, i'm not, not sure which which news to believe because i think the, the next one which was confirming was that he just actually maybe just collapsed but we don't know what it yeah. was because he was maybe panicked about what was happening outside i don't know so it's just a very, sad yeah. way to live yeah a very sad sad story for um as you know mflira is a very tiny place everyone knows yeah. especially if you yeah. come from a footballing family like ourselves everyone knows everyone else in fact i received a little picture um of uh myself and my late dad at a wedding which happened to be his brother's wedding and he was a page boy wow. and, and my dad uh, yeah. was the show from before that wedding really you see because your dad and my dad we, we found out yeah. after 
my dad's death that they were best friends, which is very strange. But yeah, like we said, Muflira is a very small, very small place. But I'm just so happy that the whole Muflira family has rallied around uh, his family and raised uh, a colossal amount of money. Just It's not going to bring him back, but it's just going to help mm -hmm. sort of um, lessen that burden, financial burden. Uh, yeah. Mr. Chulufia, you are a couple at top. Uh, any sentiments on that? So is uh, Jerome Kanika as well. Any quick sentiments uh, on that? Yeah, thank you so much, Mrs. Uh, Banks. Uh, my sincere condolences to the family to start with. Mm -hmm. But it, it's such a, a sad situation, and, and even the way he died. But, um, you know, we have to believe what the, the experts have said, the cause of the death. Uh, there's nothing we can we do. Want, We're not there. Yeah, we won't go into speculating. Yeah, we want to go speculating. Yeah, we yeah yeah, but but obviously, you know the, the circumstances in which he died, mm -hmm. it, it's not a good thing. Yeah yeah, you know obviously what are, what transpired at, at the stadium must have contributed to his death, but we yeah. can't you know we shouldn't speculate. But no, it's, thank it's you. such a sad situation, and yeah. um, he was. Um, he was one of those best experts uh, FIFA had, and from Zambia. So it's a loss for FIFA, loss for football, loss for Zambia. Absolutely. Jerome? Yeah, I, I think uh, uh, first, my condolences to the, to the family and uh, to, to all the, the relatives, to him. Uh, one thing I can say is uh, this is a big bro for for us as Zambia because this man was sitting at the highest level of uh, football medical in terms of, uh, of FIFA and he was uh, uh, there uh, 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 at the game on assignment but unfortunately these things happened and uh, yeah, we should not speculate, but we should just stick to what uh, the expert have told us, though there are a lot of speculations. Yeah. Yeah. Thank, Thank you. you very much. Thank you. Now, we're going to move uh, on to a story or which is uh, of a bit of a lighter or a lighter note. So uh, there has been some, some pictures that are trending on social media of the Matera Member of Parliament, Mr. Mao Sampa, taking selfies with lions in Livingstone. And uh, you would have noticed as well, it, yeah, it, it's a bit of a kind of a light moment type of thing. And um, you would have realized that we had a special guest in the country. I say we, we're in the United Kingdom, but um, <laughs> we always refer to ourselves as being, you know, in the country. It feels like that sometimes. So Zambia had a special guest in the name of um, uh, the president of Rwanda, Mr. Paul Kagame. And um, in relation to what the material member of parliament was doing in Livingstone, the two gentlemen, President Hakainde Hichilema and President Kagame, were also having a bit of a down, down moment, you know, just chilling, chilling with the big boys, as you guys like to call it, Moira, just having a jolly good time. And I'm sure uh, the president was uh, kind of feeling quite nice, showing his counterparts the best bits of Zambia or what Zambia has to offer. They were taking pictures with cheetahs. Whilst Mr. Sampo was taking pictures with lions, the two presidents were taking pictures with cheetahs. Uh, Mr. Sampo, what's your view on that? Very quick sentiment. That was so interesting. It was so lovely. And um, I think we are coming back to the real Zambia, you know, a, a welcoming country where we, have, we can cherish and appreciate the resources that we have and um, and um, the wildlife as well. Uh, so mm -hmm. it was kudos to the to, to the to the president and uh, the organizing team. And uh, I my, um, I already posted on my um, uh, Facebook and on my WhatsApp uh, status that uh, in Zambia, you guys, you Europeans, you work with you you play with cats and dogs. <laughs> if you come to Zambia, we will take you so that we can play with our smaller cats who are lions and cheetahs. <laughs> <laughs> it was so beautiful. Wonderful indeed. It was. 
Fantastic. Yeah. Bueno? Um, I always, I always find um, Mr. Mouse Sampa to be just a laugh. I think he's, he's just a <laughs> hilarious character. So often I'm just laughing and thinking, it's as usual, you know, this is the kind of thing. But it was just funny because I think when you look at the, <laughs> when you compare uh, the president petting the animals and he's like, you know, I'm not, I'm not going here and petting one, so I'll just get a sister. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> behind, <Yeah>. behind the <laughs> wire, a wire barrier. So that, that that's just. I think Mr. Mouse is just a, a joke. I, I'm sure he would probably do very well as somebody in tourism because I think he'd keep going around and doing all these funky antics. And but I think it was equally very heartwarming to see the president and um, the president uh, Paul Kagame as well. So that that was refreshing. Um, yeah. It's just a little unfortunate because I know a lot, a lot of people in Zambia. Uh, with the poor cup of gum, there's always that little, mm, no, th th we don't, why do we have so many refugees in? So there's that uh, distension that I've noticed that maybe a lot of you, my friends in the West, won't have, and you look on poor cup gum as this hero, whilst a lot of people in Zambia are very, you know, quite laid back and offish about it, especially that there's, there's always been, I'm trying to remember his name, there was a journalist that disappeared from Zambia and he'd gone to um Rwanda and then he'd never come back and so a lot of Zambians are are not so excited would I say mm. okay well um I think it would have also been lovely for us to focus on um the content of the visit unfortunately yes, a lot was know. uh his visits um was overshadowed his photographs that were who took the best photographs and all that sort of uh <laughs> uh uh, sort of sentiments that perhaps we could have done without. Uh, Jerome, your very quick view. Yeah, uh, I think the one, uh, the coming of the president of Rwanda was so nice, if I can say so. And at least we saw uh, 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 social media was very much fancy actually in terms of the photos. We didn't know exact which among the photo the, the photographers was telling us the truth. But he asked the Zambians as always, and me with my family, we stand with the Chela Tukta because he has never liked to us. <laughs> so those are the photos, they are the ones you may think like, no, those were not the, the, the act ones. But for Chela, we are the one because all the photos we see for the president, the the, yeah. the, the, the first red come from Chera. Yeah. So the others, we don't know them. Okay. Um, you're very loyal, and I like that. Uh, let me just add to that point of view. Chela was responsible in part for rebranding the president. So in as much as everyone starts bashing him for whatever reason, rightly or, or wrongly, but it's important to also remember that um, he helped uh, kind of rebrand the image of 887 into Bali from a very serious businessman to a very approachable person. Uh, Bachelufia, very quickly. I, I, I think my, 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 this visit of uh, Pork uh, Kagame is a mm -hmm. funny one. Instead of us talking about the bilateral agreements and everything, mm -hmm. uh, it just became a joke. You know, people, you know, who, who got the best pictures, Kagame's photographer or mm -hmm. Chela Tukuta, and then Bamao Sampa, Uluvuliva Tampa Navo, at Kulivonesha. Just because HH are in a Nama Chita, Nawayako Panalayon fence. You know, it, it, was, it was just childish. But, and then I saw a comment by, by Bamuisho, mm -hmm. that HH is very corrupt. At the at the Martha Panga comment, no, but he posted or poster. You know where they, they, they were the is it the zebras were, mm. were eating from the wheelbarrow? Yes, 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 yes. yes. That was and a stunning then, image, wasn't it? Yes, and then he made a comment that um that is uh is 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 enjoying himself with Kagame at his own hotel while the government whilst the government is gonna pay you know, for the expenses. But what, what uh, uh, Muisho doesn't understand is HH doesn't own any hotel in Zambia. HH is the chairman. I don't know whether he's still. Now that is the president. And a chairman can be anybody, but, but as such, he can be appointed. 
as a chairman of uh, an organization because you are independent. Mm. So HH ne has never owned any hotel. He was just chosen as the chairman of the, the hotel. I, I think perhaps Muisho was referring to the fact that a 887's house is so swanky, it looked like it could pass for a hotel perhaps. I don't know. No, no, no. no. He was talking about the, the hotel where they were. They, they, they were because the that's the hotel they've been saying he owns it. Mm, but but there, are no, there are no records at PACRA that shows that yeah. HH is a, is a shareholder. Yeah. And there was Over another another member of the opposition who uh, was talking about uh, he's hanging out with the cheaters whilst he's a cheater. But um, it's quite fascinating, actually, and quite troubling as well, at the same time that um, people who are supposed to be providing checks and balances are peddling on not only lies, but also just uh, very infantile kind of conversations when they should have been looking at their bilateral conversations that were taking place. None of them picked anything that was substantial, which is quite concerning. So, um, yeah, it goes to show the caliber of opposition uh, leaders that we have. I think it's imperative that we have a decent uh, opposition because we don't want uh, the United Party for National Development to be uh, a one-party um, government, you know, one-party state, Zambia to be a one-party state. We, we do not want that. It, we have to keep them on their toes, you know, get their feet close to the fire. If they're making mistakes, we tell them, we guide. But if you don't have a formidable opposition, people who are discussing their hotel, the zebras, and making all these memes, I'm like, come on, you know. Um, so, yeah, that is inter interesting. Uh, from one light moment kind of... Uh, Jerome, you have something to add. Yeah, uh, you see, Linda, it's not that uh, the UPND is going to be a one a, a state kind of of, of uh, uh, party or kind of government. No, the thing is, uh, President Yaka in the HDMA has uh, just, you see, uh, risen the bar for presidents too, too, too high. Do you think Ramusho can be compared to, to that or Sean Tembo? It's not possible. Mm. So no wonder now, what they see now is the matter of them, their debate is about the suits. They cannot start talking about agreement. So when you see suits are being pronounced more, just know that that's the level of opposition that we have. And that's what they can talk about. They can't talk about anything sensible apart from anything that is just nothing but uh, out under the bridge. So if only HH didn't take the bar of leadership very high, we would have seen him being attacked like left center. But he has risen the bar. Now, I don't know when we are likely to have the next opposition. I'm worried. Honestly, that's not very much worried because Sean Temple is far from it. Uh, I don't know whom we can, whom we can say. Thank you very much, Jerome. Um, we're going to stay on the Kavushi Member of Parliament, uh, Honorable Boma Lusambo, uh, slightly longer than I would care to. Uh, but him and his wife, Nancy, pleaded not guilty to 10 counts of uh, possession of property, probably suspected of being proceeds of crime and other money laundering uh, related charges. Uh, so this whole started in uh, sometime in February when uh, Mr. Lusambo was arrested by the anti corruption commission for being in possession of properties uh, that were suspected of um, being proceeds of crime. Uh, I think the amount that was being floated was about $378,000. Uh, so now when he was leaving um, the court today, uh, he had some very unpalatable sentiments towards the president. Uh, who would like to go with this? who watched the video of Honorable Usambo just coming out, getting into his car, and he said some very unsavory uh, things. Jerome, did you see that? Yeah, I saw that, Linda, but look, I think to, to start with, uh, one, you cannot expect anything good or sensible to come from Usambo. One, President Hakainde Echdema, is a graduate from the finest university in the country. Well, Lusambo, none, nothing, wala. So is the best doctor? thing that you need to know. 
He's a doctor, Jerome. He's Dr. Lusambo. He's okay, a doctor. Then, I'll, start to, I'll start also calling you Dr. Linda Banks. <laughs> I'm working on my PhD. <laughs> not quite no, yet. No, 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 no. That's not the doctor of Lusambo. It is the, the doctor of Lusambo. It's a certain university somewhere, which is on floor house number something. When you reach the corner, whatever thing, yeah, that's the type of university <laughs> that is gave him a doctorate, which we don't know, a doctor of philosophy, whatever thing. This university, even you, when you go this time, you'll find it's no longer there. You say, no, <laughs> the university. <laughs> I'm, 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 saying, I'm telling you the truth. When you go there, it's one room <clears throat> with a chair, and you want to say, what type of thing? So, you cannot compare such kind of, of thinking. I, so I, I, I don't think so. And moreover, uh, the time somebody did is education. I think there were a lot of uh, there were a lot of, uh, of good government sponsorship and all that, mm -hmm. but he couldn't get one. Well, the other one, President Jaka, had to get a government sponsor because he. He got good grades. So you Thank can't you. compare. So it's, mm -hmm. yeah. Thank you very much. Uh, Mueloa, quick sentiment on that. And viewers, before Mueloa comes in, if you have any comment or view on any of the topics that we have covered, kindly type in your comments. I will have uh, an opportunity to read some of them. Mueloa, your view on Honorable Osambo uttering some unsavory uh, sentiments towards the president? I think I looked at it and I thought the nerve, you know, in, in his time, nobody would have been able to say what he was saying. He's just taking advantage of the freedom that um, he has at the moment. And the worst part of it was that he was with his wife and she, she looked quite a bit embarrassed. But I think she, I was itching to hear what she says <laughs> when the video goes quiet, you know, <laughs> but that's just a horrible situation, I think, to be in. I, I felt for mm -hmm. her. Mm -hmm. And then to an extent, I, you know, as, as uh, Jeremy said, you look at him and you're thinking, this is just, you know, Caponia. So what am I expecting? I'm not really surprised, you know, that this is the behavior that he's going to exhibit. You come out of court and you begin shouting, hey, and all sorts of things. That's typical mm -hmm. Caponia places and, and well, speaks of his origins. So mm -hmm. it's very, you look at him and he says, oh, it's befitting because that's his kind of, his kind of style. And, and it's all equally revealing because you think this is who was ruling us, you know, in Lusaka. Somebody mm -hmm. brought him. And he was a minister of a capital city, and that's yeah. what he can say. It really tells you, like, you know, we, we got Thank really you. lucky in time. Thank you very much. Well, just to add on that, I uh, would like to say to all our Kaponya friends that we do not mean any disrespect uh, in regards to that statement. Uh, we respect you very much, and you are an incredible um, part of society. I'm sure the Kaponyos will be probably saying, uh, he's not one of ours. Sorry. But, Patrick. Uh, well, Linda, sometimes when I sleep, sure, everybody was minister this mm. uh, Mr. Collapsed. And uh, whenever, mm. whenever I see Lusambo, it takes me back to that time. I don't know whether you guys know about this. When he was um, 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 throwing stones, MMD. MMD. He went with Bakabo, Vavanankwe to go and drag uh, Major Kachingwe out of the... He was the, he was the Secretary General of the party, mm. out of the MMD um, Secretariat. Secretariat, yeah. Like, like a dog. And this man is supposed to be Abafiash, Abakwe. Mm. And then when Lungu appointed him Minister Copper Belt, I said, mm -hmm. Mueles, this guy, Minister... And you know, you won't be surprised the behavior you have a couple of and I was that you cannot change pork. I, I don't know whether you understand what it means. <laughs> so there are certain things that you cannot change, and Lusambo, you cannot change. Then Banamayo, I think Banamayo Mulachula sana. Imagine Lusambo Mulume. You, you cannot tell him at Imo and Filomachel and Dapalia Tafiweme. I tried to imagine I my peace. <laughs> yeah, that thought I tried to imagine and no, I'm not going to imagine. Sorry. Uh Mr. Pombo, your view. 
But Patrick, but Patrick, well, about the pork, here in Italy they said the pork changes its fur. It's like just like um, a wild dog. It changes its fur. It does not change its habit. So it remains with the habit. Anyway, but, but, but I think even the Zambians, most of the Zambians now, they realize what type of ministers uh, the PF had. And um, it's just a surprise now where, when they have uh, um, unveiled whatever was hidden uh, behind these guys. And uh, thank you. I think now we know, even Lusambo himself, the people in Kawushi, some of them they know, some of them they do not know because they still, uh, for Mrs. Linda Banks, they still fall under the philosophy of the Tantameni program. So they follow that very much, Tantameni and the situation is solved. Now in this government, mm -hmm. President Hakim de Chilema doesn't want to um, push the Zambian people to be used to get in some ticks and, and, and all those things. He wants them to, to work very hard and be self-sustainable, uh, which is wonderful indeed, and we sustain that. So, Vam Valusambo, his case, pleaded guilty, pleaded innocent. For me, it doesn't change anything. I have only one fear. I can confess this on, on this platform. I have only one fear. When the police cautioned these people, they arrested them. Were they sure of uh, the accused forwarded to this gentleman? I am scared because this can be like a boomerang, which really... Um, um, sheds a dark cloud on our president. He is not the one involved, but if the police, Mrs. Linda Bank, they went forward, arrested Bowman on accounts of suspicion of all these charges, and at the end, nothing is confirmed, that really is a problem. Yeah, okay. So, Thank you very much. Uh, we're going to stay on some of these stories that perhaps I wouldn't want to spend so much time on, but they are trending, so we have to talk about them. We're staying with a lovely patriotic front. Um, so within the patriotic front, there has been some fracas and some uh, issues brewing, um, and we're going to touch slightly on what has been happening with Honorable Kambwiri. Um, every time I talk about Honorable Kambwiri, I'm reminded of General Chipakpa. I'm not going to say what he always used to say because it's just, yeah. Um, yeah, no, I uh, <laughs> Thank you, Bob. <laughs> so, Honorable Kambwiri, now my Americans, they're beefing. Whether it's, it's a, a real beef or it's staged, uh, well, it's not funny. <laughs> Stop it. <laughs> You're not helping. They're beefing. I'm Americans. He said something that was quite... First of all, he's doing the live videos which are upside down. I'm not sure what is going on with that. Oh, the live videos. The worst part, I think, is that somebody else is handling the camera and they respond <laughs> to your call. <laughs> in the upside afterwards and so can you just can you just share what he responded to you? You you said something and he responded, but what did he say? I think I asked him, I said Yeah. I think it was along this the country line is... of you know, because I think yes. he was trying to advise um, the new Don government about um, getting back onto the subsidies mm. on the fuel. Um, and then, um, and I'm thinking, is, is, I thought it was somebody doing a live on his, you know, on his phone, but somebody was probably a handler who had didn't, you know, didn't hold it properly or something. So mm. then the response comes and it's Kalimash. And I'm thinking, eh? <laughs> but why is it upside? You know, it says, 
I think you must have said Nisha twice today, mam mummies or something along those uh, lines. But I, I saw a comment where he said Vamami Muicheme, meaning yeah. like you had said something, then he goes yeah. Muicheme, like watch Muicheme. yourself type yeah. thing. And I was like, Yeah, I, I asked him to put the phone. I, I said, Can you please put the phone up? <laughs> Upright. <laughs> So these upside down live videos have carried on and um, the innocent Vaino said something quite hilarious. I, I nearly spat my tea out as I was listening to this. Um, he was explaining how uh, Vashta Sila's people came to his house to arrest him. And then <laughs> at Aposo Aponishi, Stop laughing. I haven't said anything yet. I need to tell this story properly. <laughs> I'm so sorry. <laughs> Apologies, viewers. This is just this is crazy. And these are the people who wrote us. And I requested to push it challenge that we have got she what nice Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Any thoughts about Patrick? <laughs> I think, Shall Valinda, I've, 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 I've got anything to say. I've enjoyed <laughs> laughing, but it's, 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 it's drama. Okay. I don't know. I don't know. You Thank don't know. you so Mwela? much. Okay. Mwela, a very quick last word on that. This is crazy. Um, <laughs> it's, it's, no. it's hilarious, but the worst part of it is that, you know, when you look at the character of Kalimanshi and you look at Kambwini, the two people are not supposed <laughs> to over. <laughs> they don't <laughs> and Then they do <laughs> It's one of the friends. I think last night I got to hear a video. I don't know if you've heard it, where um Kambuli is telling off Kalimanji for <laughs> insulting Edgar Lungo. And I'm asking myself, what what how can these people have anything in common? So it becomes hilarious on the on that on that spectrum. And you're just thinking this this was this was a rubbish government. I don't even understand how Kalimanji was tolerated. Amazing. In, or it's, just, it's a hilarious thing. Yeah. Right. Um, I think let's just take the conversation on a slight different tangent and get a little bit serious. Um, let's move all the way to Zambia Revenue Authority, but Patrick, unpack this conversation for us as we try to compose ourselves and have a glass of water. Yeah, I think let's talk about something that uh, Vakalimashi... Zambia uh, Revenue Authority, please. Zakali Manch never Lusambo cannot understand. That's the only way we can beat them. <laughs> yeah. So, Malinda, the news that is coming, this, this mm -hmm. is a report by Liang Goma, mm -hmm. is, is very good news because, you know, with the dry coffers that the government left, uh, the previous mm -hmm. government left, which everybody knows, then Kongole. Yeah, this government needs liquidity, needs cash mm -hmm. and fast cash because they shouldn't go and borrow again. So they need cash, and it looks like Zambian Revenue Authority is doing an excellent job. ZRA revenue collection, uh, ZRA exceeds revenue collection targets for the first quarter of 2022, which is the first three months of 2022. So the story is Zambia Revenue Authority, ZRA says in in the first quarter of 2022 exceeded the revenue collection target by 1.3 billion kwacha, which is which is very good after recording the net outturn of 22 billion against the target of 21 billion. Mm -hmm. So this is very good because now the government has got money to pay the teachers the, mm -hmm. because the uh, the teachers and the medical um, uh, personnel they are employing at least you know it's a it's a breather for for the government because what happens is if the government doesn't have this kind of cash they go into 
into the domestic market to borrow, mm -hmm. and then more in Congole. Yeah. And and what they usually do is uh, they issue um, uh, treasury bills, which is which is. They are so attractive and more Congolese because the interest rates are very high because you need the cash so quickly to spend. So you have to pay more money. So this is, this is very good for the government, at least it has given them a breather. Mm -hmm. And I pray that this continues for the next three quarters. Over to you, Balid. Thank you very much. Ba Ba Pombo. any sentiments on the uh, latest outcome for ZRA? Um, I think it's, it's also a, it's a positive aspect because it shows also the seriousness of the new John uh, government. Mm -hmm. It gives um, encouragement and courage to the Zambians, not only the Zambians, but also for, to the um, world to be investors in the near future. So it is boosting business and, uh, and is giving encouragement to the Zambian people. And I think it is also encouraging uh, the, the Zambian nationals to pay their taxes. You know, the more the people they can pay taxes, the more the government can re 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 receive some, some something and the more uh, we can uh, share whatever we are receiving from the local citizens uh, uh, for the benefit of the lot. So I think it's, it's, it's quite a good idea and, uh, and, mm -hmm. and, and a good, good chance, yeah. Thank you. Excellent. Moelo? So. Um, I think like the others have mentioned that it's a good, um, it's a good improvement. Um, it's a positive one. The only thing I'm thinking is <laughs> a 50, if I'm reading correctly, 56% increase um, from 2.6 billion in 2021 to 4.1 in 2020, and this is just a quarter. So I'm mm. telling, I'm asking myself: Are these people who have panic paid, and then we're a bit excited and saying, "Oh yes, this is," it. but people have just panically paid their taxes because you don't want to be caught out, and we might be celebrating a bit prematurely, I would say, because just in case that has happened, this might not be reflective in the next quarter because people are just paying what they owed and they're just scared, you know, that kind of thing. It's commendable, though, that people are on track and people are getting back. So I think that's, for the national coffers, that's a good, that's a good thing. That's really good. So um, one positive news to the next. So today, uh, Prof Light Zambia unveiled their high-tech 50-seater jet. And apparently, the, uh, this is the first commercial flight, uh, which is Zambian registered. And... Um, after having been approved by the Zambia Civil Aviation, Aviation Authority. So I thought that was um, a lovely piece of good news, which is great. Um, um, mainly for me, I'm thinking uh, it might be a good idea for us to start considering uh, engaging British Airways back into business because uh, you remember how easy it was to fly between London and Zambia. You could leave in the evening and you'd have breakfast with your family. I remember one of the politicians actually bragging about that, but um, uh, it was very possible. <laughs> Pardon? I think that must have been Cambodia and his uh, yes. yeah, yeah, breakfast. Yeah. So I thought this was quite a lovely sort of um, Zambian piece of news to celebrate. Um, before we end, does anyone have anything that they would like to bring to light? Any topic before we move actually to uh, some of the comments from our viewers? Is there anything that you might want to talk about before we move on, uh, Mr. Chilifia? Yeah, I think, Belinda, what you've said about the, the airline industry, mm -hmm. I think we need to start with, you know, Kagame was in Zambia, yeah. And some of the things they talked about is uh, tourism. I think um, a lot of Rwandanese would love to come to Zambia. A lot of people all over the world. But mm -hmm. then we need to have um, um, frequent flights between Lusaka and um, Mfue and Livingstone and um, um, Kasaba Bay. We don't have so many flights. And, mm -hmm. I'm, and I'm happy. Those you know, at least there's a bigger plane. I'm so scared of small planes. <laughs> the I other planes that they the have, I'm, I'm, I'm so scared of them. But then, Belinda, you mentioned something good. Our, uh, I don't know which ministry is, is it the Minister of Foreign Affairs? Mm. They need to start talking with other, 
It's said that we've got good airports now, big yeah. airports. Mm. They need to start talking to airlines like British Airways, Lufthansa, yeah. Air France. You know, they start flying direct into Zambia, not not into Kenya or Luanda or or, or Ethiopia. Just you know, it was it was lovely. The first time I I came to the UK, mm -hmm. you know, to you know to stay, I flew with British Airways. We left. Lusaka in the in in the in the morning, early in the morning, mm -hmm. and I was at Heathrow in the in in the evening, which is fantastic. Which was, was good, you know. It was really good times, good old days. I, I'm hoping that yeah, the... ten hour ten hours flight. I think yeah, 10, 11 hours. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I'm hoping Over that the Uchilema and uh, Nalumango administration can work on that. So a couple of things that would be quite helpful, especially for Zambians in diaspora. Um, uh, flights. Yeah, and, and, and they can also the negotiate with some of them to have uh, mm -hmm. internal flights. You yeah. know, though they might compete with uh, pro flights and they might put them out of business. Or they can go into partnership with yeah, uh, pro you know, flight yeah, and, and then have more flights internally you know or regionally yeah thank, thank you over you. to you valinda thank you very much for patrick another piece of good news this uh morning um the president um president Akane Chilema held a meeting at state house with um with the board of the swedish international development agency cedar that was led by her excellency um Marge Hardguard. Um, does anyone know what was discussed in that meeting? Do we know what that was about? We can just speculate because I have noticed that uh, President Hichilema is holding quite a few meetings with all these yeah. international um, organizations as well as, you know, embassies like regularly checking in. So uh, we will find out for you viewers. We will check uh, before we give you any uh, feedback, but it's just good to see him engaged. He's not a hidden president, shy, thank goodness. So he's able to speak to other world leaders. It's important to network, especially as a new leader. Now we're going to move on to... Um, uh, well, uh, our... uh, sorry, sorry, Mrs. Lindebank, I think with the Swedish, there was something uh, to discuss with um, the funding of um, the... Um, the vulnerables in, in Zambia, I think. I think they wow. are helping very much and um, dishing some cash so that I think the, the country can care for the le less vulnerable uh, people in the, in the nation. So the, the so-called, how do you call that money you, you give to the poor people? In the the social transfer. Yeah, social transfer yeah. thing. So I think they are you know, Thank also... Thank you very in, much. Thank yeah. you for that, uh, Mr. Pombo. Uh, now we're going to move on to the last segment, um, just to have a look at some of your questions, your sentiments. I must say thank you so much for all the stars and the comments. You have been really engaged. Some people, please don't get, get us in fits of laughter again. We've just recovered. Don't get started. Someone just said, Linda, I heard that bit about the goats that behaved like a dog. <laughs> from Baino's uh, upside down press conference. <laughs> that was very funny. Uh, <laughs> Collins Mutale says, focus your energy on uh, the buyer, i.e. the private pharmacies. Okay, he's talking about the, the pharmacies debacle uh, at the Ministry of uh, Health. The stolen drugs will not have a market. Ah, okay, that's a solution that... Um, uh, he's coming up with. Let's have a look, actually. Um, Molo, would you like to read that one for me, please? So this is by Molonda Stephen, and he's saying, what will it take to change this culture? It's not just the Ministry of Health. The Ministry of Lands is still a mess, despite all the investment in new systems and IT. I think Mr. Pombo alluded to that earlier, which is fantastic. Um, Mr. Pombo, actually, would you like to read that one for me, please? I have no, I cannot read from the, on my platform. Oh, you cannot see uh, what is Kaf and yeah. Faz doing on such uh, such a death with Nigeria. Mm. Okay, that is alluding to um, our Mafkin brother, Dr. Kabongo's body that arrived today, sadly lost his life in Nigeria. Thank you very much for that sentiment, David. Um, mm. 
Our next one is Min uh, Davis Simbai. Ministry of Lands is a mess. So many ministries are a mess. So yeah. the new Don government has got its work cut out. The analog yeah. process are uh, manu ma manipulatable. Just look at the weakness in the manual procurement procedures, which give rise to famous honeybee scandal last year okay and this is exactly what uh mr chilufia was talking about having effective traceable systems that will help uh the government it's very well and it's such uh a tedious task it must be a tedious task for the minister of health to be going around now in the southern heat you know oh. southern african sunshine moving from he, she's not going to manage from can I, say one, can I say one word Ms. linda please Yes. Regarding the Ministry of Health, uh, um, here in Italy, uh, the, the, the Italians are also very good. Their health uh, system is, is quite, quite excellent. And, um, and, and what helps the Italian government is they have um, um, a section of uh, the police forces who, who have to help in the safeguard mm -hmm. of the drug distribution mm -hmm. and in the professional working of uh, the, 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 the control that the minister went to find out here in Italy is done by the police. There is a sector of the police who mm -hmm. comes into the hospital because I'm working at the hospital, Mrs. Linda Banks, anyway. So these guys, they come and they ask, can I see, uh, please, can we see, can we talk to the, uh, 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 the, the responsible for, for the ward? And, uh, and if she is not there or he is not there, they call him or the papa, and he is supposed to, to report in 30 minutes. If he doesn't, then the procedure of penalty and, 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 and charges are, are put in place. So the minister at the moment, because we are just changing from a disaster system of governance to a systematic system of governance. I think we can even excuse our minister, but the minister is not supposed to indulge herself in such a, an activity in going to control a pharmacist, whether he's present in a, in, a, in a pharmacy. No, no, that is not her job. Let them engage, even the police. We don't want the Zambian police just to go and control traffic and charge the people because of, 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 of a tire back or whatever. They don't have a spare tire. Let even the police, if they don't have other things to do, why can't they engage them to control even these things? Because they are also an agent, emergency system. Thank I, you. I submit, yeah. Malinda, so Malinda, can I just say something? Mm -hmm. um, just a, uh, 30 seconds. I think what Mampombo is saying <clears throat> is also important, but there are certain things, Malinda, like I'm a doctor, like what Mamwera said, there are certain systems whereby they can, they can like us, when, when we're entering the office, you've got a tag, electronic tag. Yes. So th once they get in, they tag in, what they tag out, Malinda who know who is going out and who is going in. Yes. And then they, you know, and then in the pharmacy room, you only it, it's only certain people who will be allowed to go there, so they can tag in and tag out. Mm -hmm. So if drugs get missing today, you will know who went into that um, 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 room where they keep the drugs. Yeah. So these are some of the controls you can put in place, yeah. and and stuff going out because if a doctor runs away, he has to tag in and out. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, yeah, it will be very easy to to know who took what and who logged in what time, who left the yeah, building. Who logged at in what time? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Thank you so much for that. Um, Mulonda Steven says ZNBC was so shallow on on the visit. Uh, no commentary on who President Kagame was and the history of Rwanda. ZNBC is just horrible. Um, very strong sentiments. Um, thank you for your view. Um, next, and this is going to be the last uh, comment we're going to read uh, from Pru Mulenga Chomba. Says, HH is very, very collapsed. But Rufia, <laughs> you are too funny. Thank you very much. That was quite hilarious. And on that very corrupt uh, note, 
This has been a great presentation of TV Bakwetu and with me, Linda Banks, as your host with Mueloa and Mr. Patrick Chilufia and Oscar Pombo. Till we meet you again, it's good night from me. God bless you and God bless our country. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night.